Welcome to Audit the Audit, where we sort out the who and what and the right and wrong of police interactions. This episode covers badge numbers, obstructing, and citations, and is brought to us by John's channel. Be sure to check out the description below and give them the credit that they deserve. On December 28, 2019, speech pathologist John Yadalahi went to the Inner Richmond Police Station in San Francisco, California to file an incident report regarding a recent break-in to his vehicle. When Mr. Yadalahi arrived, he found Officer Colby Austin of the San Francisco Police Department in a disagreement with the victim of a hit-and-run collision, who Officer Austin accused of being in an altered mental state. Mr. Yadalahi expressed that, in his professional opinion, the victim did not appear to be having a mental health crisis, and the interaction that followed was captured on Officer Austin's body camera. So I was dead. Okay, would, would, you, would you like to do a, okay, here you go, go ahead, here, I'll, I'll sit down. You can do a mental health evaluation for me. Go ahead. Well, I feel like... Go, go ahead, you can, you can run through the questions. You are, you're, you're, what, what do you do for the hospital? I'm a speech language pathologist. It's, okay, so you're not a nurse, you're not a doctor, you're not a medical professional. I am though. Okay, then, then please do the, do the, if you could, if you can do the, the mental evaluation for me, if you could. No, I don't want, I don't need a mental evaluation. I believe you do. No, I, I'm just telling you. I'm just explaining. Okay, I can, you, can you please go through it for me? I That'd be great. Hear, you, need consent. I can hear. you need consent from where? I can hear. What do you mean consent? To participate in a cognitive evaluation. Okay, cool, yeah. But why are you leaving okay. me? Are you still All right, if you could, could, you, could you just give us a minute? Could you go outside, please? Yeah, where should I fill out? You, you can fill it out outside. No, and, but I, I haven't finished talking. You, you, please go outside, sir. Why? No. No, because because we need. No. I need to talk to you. No, no, no. It's okay. I'm it's okay. You can go outside. No, no, no. I don't. Then want you can talk to him outside. Then. No. Why? Why do you need me to leave? Sir, time to go. No, but why? Let's why go. Does Come he on. Let's go. I need. I need to talk to her. Let's go. No. I feel dirty. It's okay. We need to speak so. in private. So. No, sir, I feel like no, she's. I need your name. Let's go. I need. Sir, go. I need to speak to you in private. Let's. I need to speak to her in private. Let's go. Please don't touch me. Okay. Let's go. With all the respect. I need your name. I'd like, ma'am, I'd like to help no, you. No, I haven't, no, but I don't need your help. I'm telling him now. Sir, sir, can you please leave? No. Can I speak with her If, if you're not, I will arrest you for trespassing. So I need to speak with her in private. No, but I need, no, no, I, because I, I don't feel safe. safe. I don't okay. feel safe. Let's, let's do this. Walk to the counter. Let's no, walk to the I, counter. I, I, I will do. His phone number. I'm doing your report no, right now. I need his, no, no, I, why do you, no. See, you're making this worse. No. You are making this I worse. I need your I phone number. Can you please give me your phone number? It's Tuesday. You're making this much worse. I'm just trying to be a good ally. Okay, you're not helping at all. I'm helping. Uh, you're, you're not helping at all. I'm asking you to leave. Okay, your name is John Yadalahi. Okay, I'll make sure I contact Sutter Health and give him the video. Because I'm asking you to leave a police station and you're not. But That's why awesome. are you asking him to leave? Why? Because, is, because why I need to have a conversation with you in private. No, I don't want to be in private. Okay. I don't feel safe to be in private okay. with you. Well then, well then, that's just how it's no, going to go. I'm, would you why, like? Would you? Why, yes no, or no? Would no, you want me? Do you want no, me to write the supplemental report okay. or not? Why didn't you let me tell you? You are having a mental crisis right I'm now. I'm not having a mental crisis. You are having mental crisis. Why? Why do you? Are you because you're are all you, over the place. Uh, you are having. You are mentally unstable. So are you? So a you, are you going to leave? You're a professional. So can you can you tell me that I'm having? Why? Yes, because I'm trained to do that. I'm about to call you an ambulance to have them assess you. Would you like that, or would you like to do the report? That's Why are you okay. going to call? Okay, I'm calling an ambulance. They're going to assess you. Explaining. Okay. So I don't, I don't want to talk to you right now. Okay, well, so that's the thing okay. is, you're, you're in the police station. No, 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 listen. Right if, if you'd like, so I, I should, I should if, if you're in the police again. station, no, no, you're and in the police he, station. And he, and he told me that I need to go away. So, so just, just again, 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 John, so I'm asking you for the last time to leave. Okay, just to confirm you are not leaving. I would like her to go away. Okay, no, that is not okay. Just gonna confirm you are not leaving. Uh, I will stay with her. Okay, so you're so you are. I'm giving you a lawful order, and you are defying that order. So so at which point I'm gonna write a report, and you will be under arrest. I will not put you in handcuffs right now, what? but I am gonna arrest you. Do you understand? I do. Okay, so that is fine. You'll be okay with that. I'm not okay. With then that. I, okay. okay, that's fine. So you just you can leave. I'm just trying no, to do her report. You're making I, things I worse. That's not what you told me. You said I never said that. Say, bye bye. Do you have cameras? I do have cameras, okay, and I have a camera so then, right here. No, no, no. You have cameras of so what you say. You say, so, hey, bye-bye, bye-bye. So, so if you, say, why are you Yes, saying, yes or no, do you want a supplemental report? Why are you asking me to leave? See, if look, I she's, I'm, I'm asking her to give her I police say, service. Okay, can I have your name? I write his name. Get a, go grab the sergeant. Yeah, I write his name. I and I'm going to share something with you. 
It sounds like I know that you're frustrated. I'm sorry. It sounds like he's offering to do the, the additional part to your report. I know it's difficult right now, but I think he wants to help you. And I, yeah, and, and because I, he's... I understand, but I want I want you to get the help you need as well through this. And I feel like if you say yes and listen to him, it will make it easier for you as well. I don't want you to go through more suffering than you already have gone through. And I, I can be here for you. I can be outside for you. But look at his face. He's mad. But because I understand. Just because I'm asking but see, 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 this person is not so, in a mentally then, right state. You then, were wrong, sir. Okay? All right? And then, and then I asked for his number and he said, one, two, three. I and I said, can I see it? And he said, yes, it's here. Then I could realize that it's not one, two, three. And I asked him, no, that's not your number. So would you like me to do the report or not? The hit-and-run victim explains that when she asked Officer Austin for his badge number, which the San Francisco PD refers to as a star number, he repeatedly and falsely told her that it was 123. According to the public courtesy section of the most recent version of the San Francisco Police Department General Order 2.01, which outlines the general rules of conduct for members of the department, quote, when requested, the member shall promptly and politely provide their name, star number, and assignment. This general order was last revised on September 6, 2023, several years after this encounter occurred in 2019. However, a version of the general rules of conduct that was put in place in 2005 also states in the public courtesy section that, quote, when requested, members shall promptly and politely provide their name, star number, and assignment. As such, it is likely that Officer Austin's conduct in refusing to provide his actual badge number and instead responding 123 would be considered a violation of this department policy. Likewise, the public courtesy section also requires requires that, quote, when acting in the performance of their duties, members shall treat the public with courtesy and respect and not use harsh, profane, or uncivil language. Accordingly, it seems probable that Officer Austin's treatment of the hit-and-run victim and Mr. Yadalahi also violated this requirement of the general rules of conduct. I understand, but he's asking, him, asking you now if you are okay with him finishing the report for you. He'll get your information and Hey, this, this woman here is AMS. She keeps asking us for a report. She's going over and over again. She's screaming. She's yelling. I asked this gentleman to leave uh, because he's interfering with my investigation. So at which point, I'm going to do a 148 for this guy. Uh, it's on camera and everything. But her, I called her an AMS for a hospital. We're trying to do a report. She won't let us. She's, she's completely 800. Okay, can I talk? Who is this guy? So he's just a guy that's sitting there, but he, he just was just sitting down, then he interfered. He just, while I'm trying to talk to her, get the information, he's basically saying, hey, I'm not going to be, I'm not going to follow directions. Like, like, he's interfering with my investigation. He's talking over me. No, I asked him. Do I need to know? Yeah, yeah, I really need to know. Okay, here's a sergeant if you'd like to speak with him. So, this guy's something else. He's a yeah, he's going to, yeah, many times. I let you talk. Can I talk to you now? Sure. Are you going to allow me to talk? Go ahead. Okay. So I have sorry, sorry, let me see your driver's license. I would like to ask you this. Can I was asking? Can I do this? Can I mention this? Is this stop? being recorded? This is being recorded. Will I have access to the video? Yes. Well, it's going to be an arrest report. So, so what I'm going to do is this video and everything that's going on, I'm going to forward to the district attorney office, and then Sutter Health CPMC, I'm going to call them. I'm going to make sure, I'll make sure that, 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 that you claim that you were a med medical health professional, that you were going to treat her. So. And is it true, I, I asked you numerous times that I can conduct my investigation with her in private, and you denied it. What, why, why did you deny that? She stated that she was in fear to be alone by herself. She was in fear to be alone by, my, by herself. Okay. okay, so you felt like that was appropriate to interfere in a police investigation? I felt like it was appropriate to support a fearful citizen. Okay, so, but you understand you were interfering? You understand you, you violated uh, 148A1 of the uh, penal code? I do not understand. Okay, I told you that numerous times that you were violating, and I told you you were going to be under arrest, and you said that was okay? I did not say it was okay. You, you did. It's on camera. So I did I did tell you you were going to be under arrest, and you said, quote, that's fine. I did not say that. You, you did say that, so... Officer Austin informs Mr. Yadalahi that he is under arrest for a violation of Section 148A1 of the California Penal Code, which prohibits willfully resisting, delaying, or obstructing a peace officer in the discharge or attempted discharge any duty of his or her employment. In general, courts have held that citizens can be convicted for violations of this statute stemming from a refusal to comply with officer commands. For instance, in the 2005 case of Smith v. City of Hemet, the Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals, which has jurisdiction over California, 
California, held that an individual who refused to take his hands out of his pockets, put his hands on his head, come down off the porch, and turn around, had violated Section 148A1 multiple times, with each failure to comply being sufficient to support a conviction for obstructing the criminal investigation. However, as the First District California Court of Appeals explained in the 2007 case of Inri DM, quote, For a Section 148A1 conviction to be valid, a criminal defendant must have resisted, delayed, or obstructed a police officer in the lawful exercise of his duties. Before a person can be convicted, there must be proof beyond a reasonable doubt that the officer was acting lawfully at the time the offense against him was committed. The rule flows from the premise that because an officer has no duty to take illegal action, he or she is not engaged in duties for purposes of an offense defined in such terms if the officer's conduct is unlawful. Therefore, Mr. Yadalahi could not be convicted of resisting, delaying, or obstructing an officer unless the prosecution proved beyond a reasonable doubt that Officer Austin's order for him to leave the police station was lawful. In this situation, Mr. Yadalahi was not under arrest or even being detained. He was merely a victim of a crime who had consensually entered a police station lobby that was open to the public and was attempting to de-escalate a situation between a police officer and another victim of a crime. If Officer Austin wanted to speak with the victim privately, he could ask her to step into an interview room and she would be well within her rights to decline and refuse to be alone with him. Under these circumstances, Mr. Yadalahi would have a strong argument that Officer Austin was not acting in the lawful exercise of his duties when he ordered Mr. Yadalahi to leave the public lobby of the police station when he was not engaged in any illegal or disruptive behavior. So this would be uh, forwarded to the district attorney and to your job as well. Do you want to forward it to UCSF as well? I'd like to too. Sure. Who's your boss? Here, just give me our phone number. I'll just give him a call right now. Okay. My manager? Yeah, sure. You'll call them right here? Sure. So this, this woman, she's in here. I'm not sure if she's under narcotics or if she's just having a mental oh crisis or something gosh, that's going on. She keeps talking in circles, doing the same thing. I, I think she's under influence of narcotics, but there, there's nothing that we can really do to talk to her. She's just talking in circles. She's so screaming. She's crying. He's, I'm not he, sure. he asked him to leave. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not. All right. What's her phone number? And then, are, so you claimed earlier that you're you're qualified to, to do these medical examinations. Are you a doctor? Or what? No, I'm a speech pathologist. So what what is your training in that? I have a master's degree. You have a master's degree. Yes. So what what is your certification or anything like that? Are you are you certificate of clinical competency, speech language pathologist? Okay, and so that that allows you to conduct cognitive evaluations. What kind of cognitive evaluations? Formal like what? Some of the names. No, like what? What do you do? So, so you can provide medical aid. Yes. Okay. So you can you can make um, you can when you talk to people you can give diagnoses and you can prescribe medicine and you can do all that kind of stuff. Prescribe medication. I can diagnose severity of mental impairment. Yes. Like like what? Like like what? Like like what would you? Memory impairments, attention impairments, altered mental status. Absolutely. Okay. Sounds good. And and you you didn't believe anything was going on here. So I believe she was under emotional distress. You under, so you believe she was under emotional stress. So even though she's under distress, I called an ambulance for her. You continued to interfere. I was not interfering. You, you, were, you were interfering. I told you you were interfering. To my understanding, I did not feel like I thought for her safety. For her safety? Yeah, her safety. Yeah, her safety. Yeah. Oh, okay. And then what, what do you mean safety? That I was going to hurt her? No, she was fearful. So, so safety as in your personal safety? Her personal safety. So that would be like, you know, someone being injured? Um, psychologically or physically, yes. No, no, physically. I don't say that, no. Okay. So, I, so was, I don't think she was at risk of being physically injured by you, no. Okay, sounds good. Thanks. Am I under arrest? What's that? Am I under arrest? Well, you, you're, you are. So you're not going to be in handcuffs or anything, but I'm writing a so report. It's documented. You're under arrest. So you're, you're free to go. I have but, to but, go there. 
What's that? Okay, okay, sounds good. But yeah, you, you just so you know, you were under arrest, and in the report, it's going to be in an arrest record. And all that stuff. Okay. Officer Austin tells Mr. Yadalahi that he has been under arrest, even though he was never placed in handcuffs. As we have discussed many times before here on ATA, the fact that an individual was placed in handcuffs does not necessarily mean that they are under arrest, and courts have consistently held that the use of handcuffs does not automatically transform an investigative detention into a custodial arrest. Conversely, an individual can be quote-unquote under arrest in situations where handcuffs are not used. In the 1991 case of California versus Hadari D, the Supreme Court held that an arrest can be affected by either the application of physical force, however slight, or, where that is absent, submission to an officer's so-called show of authority to restrain the subject's liberty. In this situation, Officer Austin did not apply physical force to Mr. Yadalahi, but he did tell him that he was under arrest, and Mr. Yadalahi seemingly complied with the quote-unquote arrest by remaining in the police station. Therefore, it is likely that a court would determine that this encounter constituted an arrest by show of authority. But apparently you guys hear one, two, three, so that's fine. I, I heard that too. Oh, you, you heard that? From, from across the room through uh, yes. bulletproof glass? I swear to God, yes. Oh, you did? Oh, okay. All right, sounds good. You're getting a citation. How do I file a complaint? You can, like I said, you can file it for the forms, or you can file it with our sergeant. Oh, you'd love to do that? No, okay. sounds good. going to be for 148A1, which is uh, resisting, delaying, interfering with the police investigation. Can I switch from a citation to an arrest? You know, it, it's still an arrest, uh, but I talked to my sergeant because they need to improve char our charges for us. So when I talked to him, instead of forwarding it to the DA, which I could do, we figure since you're here and, uh, you know, you since you admitted to interfering, that we're just going to just cite you right here. But I did not interfere. You did, but that's fine. Officer Austin issues Mr. Yadalahi a citation for his alleged violation of Section 148A1. Under Section 836 of the California Penal Code, quote, A peace officer without a warrant may arrest a person whenever the officer has probable cause to believe that the person to be arrested has committed a public offense in the officer's presence. Resisting, delaying, or obstructing an officer is a misdemeanor offense punishable by a fine of up to $1,000 and or by imprisonment in a county jail not to exceed one year, which makes it a so-called public offense under Section 15 of the California Penal Code. Now, while the legality of Officer Austin's arrest of Mr. Yadalahi is highly suspect, if a court did conclude that Officer Austin had probable cause to arrest him for resisting or obstructing an officer, it would almost certainly determine that he was well within his legal authority to conduct a warrantless arrest. Additionally, Section 853.6 of the California Penal Code requires officers to issue a written so-called notice to appear, commonly referred to as a citation, to any individual who is arrested for a misdemeanor offense without a warrant based on probable cause. Upon receiving the citation, the citizen must then be released, although the statute does allow officers to book arrestees before releasing them. The statute also allows officers to keep misdemeanor arrestees in continued custodial arrest rather than release them in certain situations, such as when arrestees are so intoxicated that they could be a danger to themselves or to others, they require medical examination or medical care or are unable to care for their own safety, they cannot provide satisfactory evidence of personal identification, or they refuse to sign the notice to appear. Similarly, San Francisco Police Department General Order 5.06, which has been in effect since July 20th of 1994, states that, quote, it is the policy of the San Francisco Police Department, in accordance with state law, that officers cite and release all persons arrested for misdemeanor and infraction offenses, with certain limited exceptions that mirror the situations outlined in Section 853. 6 of the Penal Code. As such, it is likely that a court would conclude that Officer Austin was required by state law and department policy to release Mr. Yadalahi with a citation rather than hold him in custody. Have you ever been arrested before? Nope. First time? Okay. You ask him, he's right here. If you want to ask him, before you go outside. She already has his phone number, but. I know. First, you're going to put this in the right hand. Can I answer? Yes, I saw everything. I was here. 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 Y
Okay, sir. So just so you know, so you're under arrest for obstructing and delaying my investigation. So I'm trying to give this woman investigator her crime that's going on. Okay. Also, I noticed there was some kind of medical thing. You claim that you could give medical services when indeed you could not. I asked you to leave. You did not leave. I, I, I asked. I asked you numerous times. You, you're not a doctor, right? I'm not a doctor. You're not a doctor. I asked you numerous times I to leave. Hold on. I asked you numerous times to leave. I let you know that you would be under arrest, and you said that's fine. I did not. You, you did. It's going to be on camera. Okay. So you said that's fine. You said that numerous times. I, and I even told you you were under arrest. I did not say that. I even told you you were under arrest. Okay. Mm -hmm. So for those reasons, okay, you made the situation much worse. Okay. For those reasons, you're under arrest. So side right here. That's your court date. Was there a reason why you were grabbing your handcuffs when I was right here when you were standing next to me? Well, yeah, there was. Was I was going to put you in handcuffs? Was I was going to bring you in the station? But it ended up I had my sergeant right here. I didn't need to do any further investigation. You repeatedly said I would not be handcuffed. I, I did, but but it also I said I was just going to forward this to the DA first. But no, we're, we're decided to go with the okay. uh, citation. It felt like intimidation to me. Okay, that's, that's fine. Uh, duly duly noted. Uh, also, also you could say it's probably intimidation that I'm trying to speak to a victim here, and you're standing behind me, refusing to leave the station, give us privacy. So that was that was that was the reason why I told you to leave is because I believe you're intimidating us. Okay, so sign sign right here. And this is to say that I will be. You will be appearing in court. And and you'd like me to contact your uh, supervisor about this. Okay, I mean, you gave me your yeah, information, so you'd like me to? Okay. Yeah, I think she'd be proud of you. She'd be proud of you for getting arrested? Okay. For standing up for a civilian man. Okay. There you go. After receiving his citation, Mr. Yadalahi spoke with the sergeant about the process for filing a complaint and explained what happened during the encounter. What would you like to? Um, can I discuss what happened with you? Yeah, of course. Okay. So I, I was here yesterday, and I was speaking with... Uh, female officer yesterday, she's very kind. Uh -huh. um, it really sucks that two people who were victims of crimes, she was hit uh, in her car, from my understanding, I don't know, my car was working into, are now leaving as a victim, as, as criminals, essentially. Um, and um, also I've been threatened, and threatened to lose my job, you know, like over trying to help a civilian. I'm sorry you went through this. I really do apologize. That's not what we're trying to do here, right? I no, mean, I understand I, that. Yeah, I um, was pretty shocked. Um, but like I said, right now I'm not taking any sides. Sure. I understand what you're saying. Yeah, I, just, I, I just wasn't here. Yeah. And then uh, when you do file your complaint, that's what the investigators do. They'll go through their body cam and they'll watch what happened and see if it matches up. And like I told her, she requested his body cam, which is fine to do. So I just can't provide it through a local that's station. She'll have to go to our legal department at 850 Bryant and request it. Can I take that down? Yeah, yeah. It's our legal department, and they're at 850 Bryant. What he told me was that... I know what you told me already. Yeah. <coughs> this is what he told That's me. Fine. That while he was trying to help out a victim of a hit-and-run collision, uh, he got involved trying to help her or something along the lines of that. Uh, eventually, he stated that it impeded his investigation, trying to question her on what happened. He told you to leave. He did not leave. I don't know, multiple times, one time, I don't remember exactly. Uh, at that point, I'm sure it didn't happen exactly like that. I'm sure maybe he asked you to leave once, twice, maybe he didn't ask you to leave, I don't know. He stated he asked you to leave, he didn't leave. If a person, if a police officer comes in an investigation and if somehow you're questioning or you're wanting the state to help the victim is impeding, then they can cite you for a 148-1 misdemeanor for impeding or delaying, right? It's a very simple, straightforward. This will go to court. Judge will hear you out. When you have witnesses and body cam, and if it doesn't jive, then you know where that will go. But if it does, I mean, that's how it works, right? Paramedics also arrived on the scene, and after examining the hit-and-run victim, found that there was nothing medically wrong with her. Mr. Yadalahi later reported that the criminal charge against him had been dismissed and expunged, and that Officer Austin was no longer with the San Francisco PD. Mr. Yadalahi expressed interest in filing a lawsuit, and even created a GoFundMe campaign to raise money for legal fees. However, Mr. Yadalahi has since deactivated donations on the GoFundMe, with the last update from November 4th, 2020 stating that Mr. Yadalahi 
Abdullahi was still searching for representation. As of the date of writing this episode, it does not appear that Mr. Yadalahi has taken any legal action against Officer Austin. But the GoFundMe campaign does state that any funds raised in excess of legal fees will be donated to the ACLU. Overall, Officer Austin gets an F for maintaining a hostile, dismissive, aggressive, and unprofessional demeanor throughout the encounter, falsely claiming that the victim of a hit-and-run accident was having a mental breakdown and under the influence of narcotics because she had an emotional response to his poor treatment, and arresting Mr. Yadalahi for simply attempting to defend and protect the victim from Officer Austin and respect her wishes not to be alone with him. Officer Austin also repeatedly and blatantly misrepresented the facts of what occurred, falsely accusing Mr. Yadalahi Yadalahi of lying about being a doctor, and inaccurately stating that Mr. Yadalahi said it was okay if he was placed under arrest. But I am going to arrest you. Do you understand? I do. Okay, so that is fine. You'll be okay with that? I'm not okay with that. They're not okay. Even it's on camera. Okay. So I did, I did tell you you're going to be under arrest, and you said, quote, that's fine. I did not say that. You, you did say that, so... Threatening to call Mr. Yadalahi's employer was also completely inappropriate, and seemed to be a clear attempt by Officer Austin to retaliate against Mr. Yadalahi for refusing to bow to his abuse. While I do not believe that an officer should behave as disrespectfully as Officer Austin did when they interact with any citizen, it is truly unbelievable that both Mr. Yadalahi and the victim of the hit and run were in the police station for assistance as the victims of crime. Officer Austin demonstrated his true colors during this encounter, and I am grateful that he is no longer employed with the San Francisco PD. Mr. Yadalahi gets an A+, for remaining calm and collected throughout the encounter, repeatedly attempting to de-escalate the situation that Officer Austin insisted on escalating, and being willing to be arrested in order to defend and support a stranger who he saw being mistreated. I commend Mr. Yadalahi for his patience, kindness, and tenacity, and I am truly impressed by his ability to maintain a peaceful and respectful demeanor when faced with Officer Austin's repeated rude, cruel, and dishonest comments. Mr. Yadalahi demonstrated a immense courage by standing up for a crime victim who was being emotionally abused by a police officer. And I hope we can all learn from his example. Let us know if there's an interaction or legal topic you would like us to discuss in the comments below. Thank you for watching, and don't forget to check out my second channel for even more police interaction content.